Do you want us looking at you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt the film had some witchcraft elements to it. Was this something you thought about when you were making it? Yeah, I'm definitely inspired by folklore and and kind of how witch, witchcraft, you can see it as something negative, but actually it was just people trying to look after themselves and, you know, nothing supernatural, it's almost grounded. So Eleanor's character is sort of seeing that, uh, that cusp between, is this something fantastical I should be afraid of or is it just something natural? Yeah. Gwen has to take on lots of adult duties to keep her family going. How do you think young people's roles have changed? Obviously, this is set in the 19th century. You were raising a family. She's having to look after a very young sister and an ill mother. And you had an entire farm to look after. You know, you had so many responsibilities and it was all physical hard work. You know, we're so privileged now and we don't even realise it. We have social media. We can talk to people, you know, all over the place. and this young woman was isolated completely with the weight of the world on her shoulders. Not necessarily the entire world, but her world. And so, you know, it's hard to compare the two, but there are definitely similarities in the fact that, you know, obviously we can feel weighted down by certain responsibilities we have now, like school gets in the way, or, you know, we'll have bullying or social issues that kind of get in the way of things. But, you know, apart from that, it, it's so hard to compare. And I think the heart of it is a universal story in, you know, Gwen is realize, feeling this pressure from her mother and feeling like her mother's always against her and doing yeah. things that upset Gwen. Um, but actually, it's about realising that that is tough love and that mm -hmm. is coming from a place of protection and care. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the universal story really at the heart of it that I think we have probably all experienced. Yeah. Eleanor, you won the Olivier Award at 10 years old and still so young you put in this amazing performance. What do you do to push your acting abilities? I mean, I always go for roles where I feel challenged. You know, I read the script and I knew that it was going to be a big push for me. You know, I, it's, a, it's an accent that I'm not used to doing. It's a, a storyline that's very dark. There's a lot of material in it that, you know, I never would have really explored before. So I guess. I push myself constantly to do roles where it's not necessarily within my comfort zone. So yeah, I guess that's kind of where it all came from. The film feels very authentic, but it's a period I hardly know anything about. Did you feel a connection with the era? Yeah, I, I, um, I think it's quite powerful to look back through history to uh, question where we are now. And I think if you're looking at a point in history where we were um, introduction of mechanisation, huge industry, changing a landscape, changing the environment. I think that is still very relevant today. So in some ways you can look back at the Industrial Revolution as a mirror to today. Although the settings and circumstances are very different to modern day, do you believe this is a coming of age story that you, the young people of today can relate to? As a young person of today, you're probably best placed <laughs> to answer that. You know what, I, I really do. I think, you know, a coming of age story is a coming of age story. There's so many similarities you can pick out. Obviously, they're two different ages completely, but I think that people can relate to this character. And as Will was saying before, you know, even when it's you know, tough love from your mother or accepting responsibility or, you know, becoming a woman. That's something that every person in their life has to go through, you know, they grow up. And to kind of accept that, you know, maybe the world isn't so full of fantasy as you first thought. And uh, kind of trying to move on from that and accept what's happening around you. There are lots of eerie happenings in the film. Are you superstitious? And have you ever had a sign that you should or should not follow an opportunity? <laughs> do you know what? I'm, I'm not particularly superstitious, although if I do see a single magpie, a spit and salute, and if I see two, that's two for joy. That's my only superstition. Yeah, I think for me it was more about um, the spirituality of place and connection to landscape. So, you know, as a kid growing up, I would hear foxes outside in the night, and that's quite an eerie, strange, creepy sound. Um, if you grow up in a rural community, I think there's these things that actually, as a child, spook you that are very natural. And I wanted to get that into the film, really, this sense of 
the eerie, the uncanny, the dread that can come from a rural environment. If you are young, your interpretation of it often, you take the mundane and it becomes sinister. It's nice to see the sisters having a bit of fun together despite the story being bleak. What impact do you think these moments have on the film? I think you have to understand the relationship between Gwen and her little sister for the end to really have power and yeah. make sense, don't you? Yeah, definitely. You know, it was so important that we established that bond as sisters, you know, before we'd even started. And, you know, to keep the film from being, you know, so dark, it's like those little moments of hope that actually keep Gwen going and that there's a reason for all of this. There's a reason why she's putting up with her mother's behaviour. She's putting up with all the uncertainty around her is because there's kind of some light in her life still. She's got hope and she's got her little sister. So it was kind of important to have that, that positive bond. The location plays such a pivotal role in the film. How much did you know about it before the shoot? Well, quite a lot really, because I spent eight years exploring the region of North Wales. Um, I actually made a short film called Who's Afraid the Water Sprite, which is a fairy tale. A producer called Hilary Bevan Jones saw that. And actually she's got a lot of um, family from North Wales, she's already shot three productions in North Wales and she said to me, why don't you go and explore this landscape, this was about 2009, um, after seeing Water Sprite, the short uh, student film festival. Um, and then I just travelled up to the region, initially thinking about using Snowdonia as a setting for a fairy tale and using this epic landscape to, to tell a story that maybe wouldn't necessarily have been Welsh, but then when I spent time there, I learned about the history of the region and that really inspired me just looking at these open cast quarries that had torn holes, these scars in the landscape and understanding why they were there and then you, you got into like the clearings of, of the land for the, for the quarries and it really, the story changed from being a folk story into a story about the land and about the landscape and became more historical and sort of merged the gothic and my fascination with folk stories into the history. I haven't heard Welsh accents since Gavin and Stacey, and this is far from that. What <laughs> makes this story so Welsh? Uh, I think, I actually think, I'm from Norfolk, so it's, you know, I think filmmakers should be able to tell stories from anywhere, any region they want to. I'm not a Welsh filmmaker, so I'm very careful when I talk about this, <laughs> but I feel like the story of North Wales, although ours isn't a specific historical moment, there's definitely creative license, is a very undertold story. People losing their homes to big industry during the Industrial Revolution, the land and their homes being taken from them and then they effectively become a, a workforce and have to sustain themselves by working for the venture capitalists who come in, is, is a sort of forgotten story and people's lives are really ripped up by it. And I think that removal of people from their homes and that connection we have to the land is a really inspiring story to me. So, and then we spent a lot of time researching traditional beliefs and um, you know just just the basics of living in that period and in North Wales just to try and get it as just to submerse ourselves in that as much as possible um, although that yeah like I say it's not based on any specific fairy any specific historical story because it has elements of a fairy tale. What came to you first the narrative or the setting of the film? The fairy tale that it grew from had been in my mind for a long time because it was this short film but really the feature film only came, came alive and existed once I'd visited Snowdonia. The short film wouldn't work as a feature film and, and I needed that um, idea of setting it in the Industrial Revolution rather than it being this sort of medieval fantasy period that really brought it to life and gave it the backbone and the, the kind of gravity that a feature film needs. Thank you very much for speaking to me. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you.